Hey guys, this is Chromastone 10, and today I'm going to be walking you through how to get the Easter egg done by round 5. First things first, I like to melee two zombies and then instantly open the door towards the mess hall. So we open the door to the mess hall, and I like to activate the melee challenge. It's completely optional, you don't have to. I just do it anyway because I'm going to be meleeing for the next couple rounds anyway, so might as well. Next, head over to the mess hall and pick up the first boat piece right in the middle of the room. Finish round one and keep punching to round two and three. On round two, I like to buy Quick Revive right away, and then as soon as I get more points after Quick Revive, I buy the M1. This allows me to charge my Fate and Fortune card better. Also, the two Fate and Fortune cards you need are Scope Dollars and Eagle Eyes. You can use whatever else you want for the other ones. For the, my other slots, I'm using Mana Up, Nade Party, and Shop Class to get an extra 200 free points from a Carpenter. Now I buy the M1 and just punch Yo, with right. the normal knife. Yo, we gotta put the whole spot on lockdown, dog. Here I activate Eagle Eye right away the second I unlock it. So we're getting to round three because round three the zombies will start dropping rave pouches. And in rave mode you actually do more damage, have a speed boost, and get double points per kill. You're gonna have to be extremely lucky hoping you get plenty of cash drops and hopefully the first one or two zombies you kill will actually drop the rave pouch. For me, I had to kill quite a couple before I could get the rave pouch. But that zombie dropped it right there. So I'm just gonna head and pick that up. Head into rave mode and then finish this round punching to get double points. Although, you should be warned, every time you get a kill in rave mode, it will drain your rave meter. So make sure to talk to some fairies to keep it up. I just got my scope dollars card, so I'm going to activate that next round. Make sure to stay in rave mode by talking to more fairies. So I'm just going to train zombies around here. So I can line them up with my scope dollars. Activating it there. Now I just got to try to train them up as much as I can and get collateral shots to get enough points. Keep talking to fairies and pick up any cash drops if you're lucky. I would also say right here on round four, it made it a little harder for me because I could have gone to the power right now, but I did not. I decided to go to the next round, which I should not have done because if I got to the power this round, I could have turned it on and played the zombie game, which would have gave me some more points which would have gave me enough to buy a jug a little earlier I think what are you gonna do I ended up getting it later on because of some lucky cash drops by the zombies so that was pretty helpful Just trying to stay in rave mode here so I get extra points while doing my scope dollars. Rave mode doesn't affect the scope dollar points, but it does affect the double kills for actually killing the zombie. 
on round five, I, I always kill a couple zombies. Trying to save them to charge my statues so I can get my upgrade to crossbow. Oh, so now I'm heading over to power, and on the way I'm going to look for either the owl or the deer statue, or both. You only need those two, or one or the other, whatever you like more, because they're the best bows. You don't need to pick up the eagle or the wolf bow. Here I find the deer. Now I'm just heading down to power. I might lead to a way out of here. Yo, this looks safe. Not. Once power's on, you can head over to the rave area to get the last boat part and to buy the Type 2 Assault Rifle. Also optional is you can do the Golden Frog quest, which I end up doing in this run through to run faster in water. And I actually find the Owl statue in the RV as well. So make sure to place both of those on the speaker. And pick up the boat piece. Now you can damage zombies to 70% health and it'll start charging the speaker. Make sure not to kill them. You just gotta damage them enough until they explode into red mist. Here I go into rave mode so I can get a couple more points for trying to charge these statues. So I'm gonna try to damage most of them except two zombies. Here you can see him exploding into the red mist, and it's being done correctly. So make sure to leave two zombies with no damage. You can do it with one, but I like to leave two just to be safe. Don't worry about statues not being charged yet. We can do it during the second ritual of the Easter egg. So now I'm just playing the zombie wheel game for some extra money. And rebuilding some windows for some extra money. And now I'm heading upstairs to Tough Enough to get the last boat part. But I am not buying Tough Enough and instead heading over to the docks. Um, here I place down the, the frog charm. Here, yo. Something you can do on your way to the docks, because you're already over there. But I'm not going to do it right now. Now on the docks, make sure to pick up the Pack-a-Punch reel and ride over to the island. There's a couple of things you need to do on the island. The main one is talk to Kevin. Second is pick up sausages. And third is to build pack a punch. Kevin Smith? Here I get the second reel for pack a punch. Yo, dog. Activate hey, that. Pick up food. a sausage. And then the now you want to pack a punch yeah. the type two. Yo, that's what we thought about Spaceland, dog. But we represented up in there. Now that the Type 2 is pack a punched, we're going to leave the projector room, take the zipline back over to spawn, and now we're going to head to the rave area to pick up the first picture to start the first ritual. Find the picture back here. Yeah, our boy Kevin is in luck. Dude, we have been fans of wilder shit for years, man. Since we were now we're gonna head over to the fire pit and do the first ritual. For this one, you need to shoot the arms off zombies until the picture has been fully charged, and then you can activate the picture to spawn the slasher and take him out.
The rituals are great because you can get plenty of drops, gems, and more rave pouches. Here I find gas grenades. Those are going to be extremely helpful for the second ritual in charging the statues and making crawlers for the next ritual. So now that this one has been charged, I can activate it to bring the slasher out. So what I want to try to do is the zombies that spawn during the slasher ritual, you don't want to kill them because they will disappear like 9 or 10 seconds after you get out of raid mode. So as long as you don't kill them and just try to shoot the slasher because you don't want to kill your last two zombies. Now you can pick up your picture and get your max ammo. Hopefully you have gas grenades by this point. Here I'm doing the crossbow unlock by going into rave mode, throwing a sausage at the deer heads, and picking up their symbols. The first one's in the spawn room. The second one's in this middle cabin here. And the third one is in the mess hall next to where you got the first boat part. Make sure you grab all the symbols after shooting the heads and you can now unlock the crossbow. Yo, that was a trip. You can pick this up now. It's also good for the second ritual if you do not have gas grenades. It'll help you make crawlers. So now take the first picture we got back up to Kevin and give it to him. So this isn't all of it? But at least we this causes stuff. the second Thank picture to spawn up near Tough Enough, so we're just going to head over there and pick that up. You can find it upstairs next to these bunk beds in the Tough Enough room right there. Yeah, hopefully this gets our boy back on track. Now head over to the rave area and you can do the second ritual. You can either use a balloon trap, gas grenades, or the Vlad. As long as they make crawlers, it'll all work fine. So here I train up a big horde and try to kill them in front of the statues so I can charge my statues up for the upgrade to the crossbow and also make crawlers for the ritual. There you can hear the uh, statues sound effect cue for being done so I can pick those up now just keep training up zombies there it is Activate the picture to spawn the slasher and kill him. Make sure you kill him quickly though, because if you take too long, you will not get a max ammo and have to redo the ritual over. And you don't want to fail the rituals either, because you will lose a perk if you fail the first part of the ritual. Not the slasher killing part, just the first part where you need to shoot arms or make crawlers. If you fail that part, you will lose a random perk. Here I kill the slasher, and get max ammo, and pick up the picture, and then pick up my statues. Now that I have my statues charged, I can place them at their respective larger statue. And all you have to do to get the upgrade is charge the statue with the normal crossbow explosions. So just keep shooting it probably like 10 times or so until it says you can pick it up. Here it is, it's still not charged, so I shoot one more at it. up my upgrade. Now head over to the boat and go back to the island to give Kevin the piece of the second picture. So don't worry, we're gonna find the rest for you, yo. 
Thanks, but um, I think I'm going to need a little bit to let this all. Next, you can open up to the last ritual area. And I also show you where the second frog oh. piece can be. Where the golden frog can spawn on that green chair right there. If he did not spawn in the RV for you. So hopefully you got a rave mode pouch from doing the, one of the rituals. So now you can go into rave mode and do the frog charm task. All you got to do is repeatedly jump off this little hill and punch at the ground. Make sure to smash on, I think, six frogs it is. You just smash the ground until all the frogs are gone. Make sure you keep getting fairies so you're staying in rave mode. Here I just fast forward through it so you guys don't have to wait all day. Getting more fairies. Slamming the frogs. Here's the last one. And I am able to pick up the frog charm. Right there. Make sure it's on your gun. You'll see the little frog symbol above your quick revive if you did it correctly. Now head over to the power room and pick up the skull ritual piece. Yo, that's the last one. Now head back over to the lake. You can see me running full speed in the water with the frog charm. Here I tried to activate my shop class but accidentally hit the rewind. But then I activate the shop class for a free 200 points. Trying to see if it would get me enough for jug. Sadly it was still 100 short. So I just did the ritual. For this ritual you need to get headshots on zombies before you can interact with the picture. And then fight the final slasher. Be careful when fighting this third one because each time you fight this slasher he upgrades with a new attack. So. Like the second time you fight him, he can shoot saw blades at you, and then the third time you fight him, he now throws grenades, and those grenades will instant down you if they explode next to you, so make sure you get away from those or throw them away. Picture to spawn the slasher, just like the other two. And you can see this frog charm is really helpful for this part of the ritual because it lets me run through the water with full speed, giving me much more room to fight this last slasher. for those grenades. There's one he threw at me. Grab your max ammo and your last ritual piece. And here, this is where I got super lucky and got a cash drop, which gave me enough points just to buy Jug before the final boss battle. So I quickly bought Jug. Head downstairs into the power room and activate the button. This will cause Kevin to be waiting on the boat for you. So now you can just head over to the docks and activate the final boss fight. Yo, I'm sorry, I gotta be the bearer of bad news, dog. There's a few tips I'll give you during the boss fight. Okay, for the first phase of the boss fight, which involves filling the skulls with souls, <laughs> there are two skulls you need to fill. I like to train around near the water and then bring them over to the first skull on the left. The boss fight is pretty easy as long as you keep a good distance from the slasher and don't get cornered anywhere. 
Once I have a good train, I bring him over to the first school and just start filling it up. Watch out for the circle where the slasher is going to jump. He normally jumps after he does his ground slam with his foot. First skull was filled, so I kill the last zombies over there and then run to the next skull. I activate my nade party card because I can use my gas grenades and get some more back. So once you fill both the skulls up, you just gotta bring the slasher over to this circle. It'll change the locations each time, so make sure you just look around for it after filling up the skulls. I like to use the gas grenades to make crawlers. So on this step right here, if you don't kill the last zombie, if you leave one or two as a crawler, in this case I have three, I think I end up killing this running one, but if you just leave a couple crawlers, um, you don't have to worry about any more zombie spawn. Most people kill all these zombies, which causes another wave of zombies to respawn. So as long as you just keep some crawlers, you can just focus on the slasher's weak points without having a whole train. You can pick up the max ammo after each phase, it'll spawn a new one. Watch out for his salt blades, those put you red screen really easily. So now when he jumps up here, you just want to wait in front of this rock, because a green circle will then appear, and if you're not in this circle, you will take damage from the fire outside, so make sure you're in the green circle. And then you just gotta defend off some, a couple skeletons. Now it'll put you back to phase one, where you gotta fill up schools again, so just repeat the process by training them over on the water. This time, some walls will be up. This isn't too much harder, it's just they change the path a little bit. Keep training him some zombies, take them to the school over here. And once this one is glowing super bright blue, you can go to the next one, just like before. There is the blue. So I shoot one more to kill any zombies over there. And then I run over to the next school over here. distance from the slasher and watch out for when he jumps. Now that the skulls are filled, you can see the light go in the sky, so you gotta look for the circle. Before it was in the middle, but now it's not there, so... Here I just use my gas grenades to try to make a crawler. This is where the nade party really helps. I fast forward this part so I because it took me a while to get him into the blue circle and then shoot his weak spot. So.
But I get him in the circle right here. He jumps there, and then I make sure to back up far enough so he doesn't jump at me again. But he has to walk towards me instead. And then when it starts to walk in the circle, I shoot right there where it's going. So you go into the next phase of the boss battle, where you have to damage the circles again. This is how you make a crawler. You throw your gas grenade, wait until it's almost gone, and then while it's going away, run through it and it'll damage them so they're crawlers. Now you can just focus on the slasher, shooting all of his glowing weak points. Make sure you get that max ammo if you're running low on ammo. I wait till I'm low and then grab it. Actually, I try to grab it before I finish the last circle because I'll get another max ammo on the skeleton step. So, when I know that there's only like one or two circles left on him, I'll grab the max ammo and then do the last circle on his arm leg or wherever. Right there, it's on his arm, so I shot the weak point on his arm. He gets angry and brings out more saw blades. Make sure to watch out for those. Now just train in front of the rock again until the green circle appears. The zombies will die off and then that's when it spawns skeletons. There's a green circle. The zombies die. Here come the skeletons. Last skull filling is a little bit trickier because some more walls will be up, but it really isn't much different. You just repeat the same process of training around by the lake. There's those walls. Once you got a good train, just bring them around this side over here. Watch out for the slasher though. If you get too close to him, he'll do a ground pound and he slams his foot on the ground. There I throw a gas grenade over by the skull just to kill any zombies that walk through it, but it didn't really do much. So I'm just training him again, bringing him over here. That one's killed, so I shoot when we're behind, or throw a gas grenade behind and kill any zombies that run through it. So that way they spawn over here by this school. Training him up and filling up the second school. Just like before. Once you do that, you get him in the circle, shoot his weak spot again. And now you can shoot his weak points one more time. Keeping one zombie alive. Here's the last weak point. And once you get the last one, now you can fully damage him. Because he will not go back onto the house and you don't have to do the skeleton stuff again. Now you just have to fight him. And if you have gas grenades, these will just destroy him. Like if you throw a gas grenade at him, he's dead in like a couple of seconds. Just like that, there he goes. And then you can pick up your last max ammo. You wait a couple seconds and wherever he died, he will drop a piece of the soul key. And that is the boss fight done by round five. After the boss fight, you can now go back to spawn. I'm just buying meal munchies really quick. You can head down into the power room, and next to the zombie game, you can pick up a smiley.
Hope you guys enjoyed. If you found this video helpful, please leave a like and subscribe for more.